you. <laughs> Happy Monday, everybody. So over the years, politicians have given us a number of policy wars. We've had the war on poverty, the war on drugs, the war on terror. None worked, but at least cats not allowed to fly. <laughs> but today, the Biden administration is giving us a new war. Call it the War on Observable Facts, or WOOF. <laughs> Thank you. Here are the results. We have a border that works less than Kilmeade's breath mints. <laughs> Inflation more stubborn than a mule trying to learn breakdancing. <laughs> and a crime wave that makes the purge look like Bible study with Shannon Bream. <laughs> so by what metric does Team Biden think all of this is working? What the White House calls their major policy initiatives, the rest of us call ideas going over like a full diaper on a packed flight. <laughs> They're peeing on your foot and telling you it's raining, which is why I stopped showering with Kudlow. <laughs> Yet, does anyone see evidence of a course correction, a willingness to maybe switch it up a bit? Nope. Maybe they hope we've all been so distracted that we won't even notice. But we're at a point that we have to ask ourselves, are all these outcomes by design? Now, I'm no conspiracy theorist, although I'm this close to proving Bigfoot was on Epstein's island. But clearly, when something isn't working and a group of theoretically intelligent people happily double down on it, there must be an explanation. And we have a few. One is the idea of fractal wrongness, the idea that your worldview is so wrong that you'll be wrong 100% of the time. This helps explain how people think letting murderers out of jail will somehow make us safer. The other is that there's a net benefit to them in destroying this country. On the border, we've had millions of illegals walking into the country where they're guaranteed pretty much everything but a knob job from Sofia Vergara. <laughs> it's now becoming clear that many of them are criminals. Organized shoplifting and robbery crews are operating in all our major cities. If they pulled that in Venezuela, they'd be put in jail, then sent back to America. Prison gangbangers assault our cops and shoot at them. Monsters allegedly kill our young women. Which brings us to Lake and Riley. Maybe her murder will finally force the question, why does this keep happening? Well, according to the AP, it's about the dangers of running alone. Seriously. Here's their headline, quote, the killing of a nursing student out for a run highlights the fears of solo female athletes, end quote. It's as if she died from shin splints. And in that piece, they called the suspect an Athens resident, not an illegal immigrant who'd been arrested multiple times. You know, that's like calling Hitler a vegetarian from Austria. <laughs> so only when someone escalates to murder do they finally get held and risk deportation. You think that would be the story? And it should be the story that sinks an administration. Because when Biden refuses to take simple steps to secure the border, like, for instance, reinstituting Remain in Mexico, you have to ask what I call the NLQ, the next logical question. Is this what they want? Is the policy actually designed for open and unchecked borders? Is it so we finally get better soccer players and win the World Cup? The same goes for the crime and disorder in our cities. People forget that in 2022, Joe Biden introduced his major national anti-crime initiative, the Safer America Plan, SAP for short. It might as well stand for stabbed and pummeled. And saps we were for believing it might help. His anti-crime initiative actually made us less safe. What's next? Fighting chlamydia by having sex with a stripper? <laughs> Trust me, it doesn't work. So our cities remain unpoliced dystopias, and if blacks are killing more blacks and the left does nothing to stop it, then again, you got to ask why. If homelessness keeps growing dramatically and you do nothing to stop it, why? If human trafficking is an observable outcome from illegal immigration, yet illegal immigration continues unabated, why? If inflation's high, but you keep forgiving student debt and proposing expensive legislation, why? If a president whose brainwaves are flatter than the view's seat cushions, but we continue to pretend otherwise, why? You see what I mean. Our nation's precious talking heads, they love to repeat the same cliche. Do the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result is the definition of insanity. No, it's not. Doing the same thing over and over again and denying the outcome is intentionality, not insanity. Now, I could posit theories that deep down they want to destroy our major traditions and institutions. 
that, you know, like lunatic drill sergeants, they want to break us all down so they can rebuild us in their image. But that's like putting Megan Fox under the knife so she'll end up looking like Madonna. <laughs> it's an image that will almost certainly be a lot more subservient and dependent, an image where we all look to the government for our wants and needs, a government controlled by the Democrats forever. So it's time to change the argument. It can't be about policy results anymore. Dems lost that on day one when Joe eliminated all Trump's border policies. How'd that work out for you? Feel free to answer in Spanish. <laughs> so Dems proved to us that all of this is not unintentional. Why would an entire political party design a system so awful? See, our job is not to answer that. It's the Dems. They're the architects. All I've done is change the argument. It's no longer, you don't want a real border. Oh, yes, we do. No, that ship has sailed and sunk. Side hustle as a paper boy. Oh, said the Guy Benson show, Guy Benson. As a triathlete, she reeks of Gatorade. Host of Kennedy Saves the World podcast, Kennedy. He makes it his mission to put libs in submission. Actor and stand up comedian Tyler Fisher. The counts for 70% of her body weight. New York Times bestselling author and Fox News contributor, Kat Tuck. <laughs> Guy, always a pleasure to see you. Great pleasure, Greg. I don't believe you, but anyway, <laughs> do you believe, you know, maybe the AP was telling the truth. It is no longer safe for women to run alone in America, but they just don't want to say why. So maybe they, in an unintentional way, told us the reality. What say you? Oh. The thing Young man. Was, I said it's a pleasure to be here because it's in the prompter. <laughs> you told me to say. Um, look, that AP story is disgraceful. The framing of it is disgusting. Here's a salient fact about the immigration status of the alleged killer. They give another example out of Iowa. Molly Tibbetts was murdered. Right. While out for a run, they also excluded the fact that her murderer was an illegal immigrant. Mm -hmm. That is intentional. <clears throat> and I think the reason is, not to be too cynical about it, but I think a lot of people who are journalists mm -hmm. view themselves as our societal betters. Mm -hmm. And if they include inconvenient or troublesome facts, then the bad, benighted people of America might reach certain bad conclusions. Mm -hmm. It's too dangerous to report the truth on these things. So they don't. Yes. They're ideologues. I think that's the explanation. Yeah, it's almost like when they take your dog away, they tell him it's going upstate to a nice farm. That's how they look at us, like children, <clears throat> or like you. <laughs> it's very youthful, you know. Kennedy, you are a runner. You're also a swimmer and a cyclist. That is correct, Greg. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, you're quite welcome. Thank you for your service. Yeah, I know. It's um, very brave. Very what brave. is your take on the media's portrayal of this? It, it is, to what Guy says, a protection of a narrative and while hiding another truth. I think that this reporter should actually have to move to Venezuela for a year mm -hmm. and report honestly about what's going on down there and the climate and the conditions uh, that has produced people like this who want to escape uh, a socialistic communist hellhole and come somewhere better, but they have unlearned manners, some people from that country in particular. And we saw that in Times Square when you had, you know, a 15 year old with a gun you know, firing off pot shots in our breezeway. Yeah. You know, right when when your show was recording. Yes. Breezeway is a, what do you, it, it's not a body part, although it sounds like it. Ooh, I'm a pain in my breezeway. That was my nickname in high school. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's right, it was right out front of our show. Yes. When we got shot. So, but rational people have to go like, I am one of those people that I think by and large, majority of people who want to come here and work should be allowed to do that. But the people who come here and commit crimes would not be able to do that in any other country in the world. So we should not allow that. That should not be a part of our system, especially when they're targeting and killing young women and cops. Yeah. I, I think at some point you have to go, well, maybe we have to put a different list of criteria together to allow people not only to come here, because we trust them, but allow them to stay. Yeah, but if you were to say, like, oh, as Trump said, like, they're not sending their best or they're bad hombres, suddenly you're xenophobic. 
No, we just don't like criminals. We don't even care where they're No one from. likes criminals. Nobody likes criminals. Even criminals don't like criminals. <laughs> Tyler. Yeah, now you turn to me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so uh, is your truck parked outside? Yeah, it is. Well, you know, this is this is by design, actually, yes. yeah. because kind of with the woke left, I used to be woke, mm -hmm. and the wall was like the wall. It's so scary. Yeah. You got to soften it. That's why I look like a hipster and a trucker. You know I, what I see. Mean? I it, it, it looks like I stormed the Capitol in a Tesla, and you got to go <laughs> slow. But I think we have to soften the wall concept for the woke people. Mm -hmm. Actually, make the wall soft. I just saw a Mike Lindell commercial. I'm like. Mike Lindell should design the wall, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm Mike Lindell, you know me from my pillow. Now I here comes my wall. It <laughs> it's it's wrapped in 100% Giza cotton. <laughs> so when the migrants get there and realize they can't get in, they can take a nap on my pillow, put on my slippers and walk the hell back to their own country. <laughs> <laughs> Use promo code, no, no amigo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Just an idea. That is a great idea. Anything will do. I will take <laughs> anything at this point, Kat. Um, I don't want to swear here, but I feel like our media is Wow. Whoa. I'm sorry, but when you, uh, when you see a headline like that, what, what else can you explain? How can you explain it? I don't, I, at, at this point, I mean, also, did they think they wouldn't be called on it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> because people do have, pe people are gonna find out another way, exactly. right? Exactly. Um, I think that a lot of what you're talking about has to do with, I don't know people in politics, and I'm talking not talking about s citizens, I'm talking more about, about people in the media, about politicians. Mm -hmm. They're more focused on scoring these political points mm -hmm. and keeping the other side from scoring political points than they are these actual kinds of solutions. Mm -hmm. So. I think we see that all, I mean, if you wanna, you, you mentioned inflation, or if you talk about the college issue, for example, it is just a fact that the more government's gotten involved in college education, the more expensive it's gotten. Mm -hmm. So then the government gets out there and says, it is too damn expensive to go to college and we're gonna do something about it. Because they've, they've become the side that cares about that. And mm -hmm. people are like, oh, yo, this is, and I think that people are more wrapped up in that than they are actually finding solutions at, at, the, at the expense of all of the rest of us, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. and, and to your mono's main point, sort of like going to hell in a handbasket and them trying to tell us like things are way better, we should be much more grateful, we shouldn't be noticing the bad things. Real life movie villain Gavin Newsom just said this week that this is a master class being right. put on by President Biden. Like, yeah. We know that's not true. Yeah. His approval rating's in the mid-30s. People don't believe that, but it's literally the party line, a master class. I'm glad you brought that up, because one of the things that Newsom brought up was that Joe Biden has created a record n number of jobs post-pandemic, which was easy, but all of the jobs that he created went to, uh, uh, to foreign-born people. And also, well, I, uh, Gavin Newsom is, is full of hot crap. Yeah. Because 20% of the restaurants that, that, that closed are never coming back. Yeah. And those people who no longer have any economic mobility in California, they hopped on Sylvester Stallone's U-Haul and they're moving to Florida. Yeah. They but, want to get the hell away from But thank God the French laundry is still open. <laughs> but I just, but I, I, I could agree with Kennedy, obviously, that people, Immigration's good. People who are nonviolent want to come contribute to their economy, our economy. They should be welcome to do that. And I don't think anybody thinks it's cool that this guy that's already was caught, you know, major red flags beat with the stuff he was arrested for in New York yeah. to then go and kill somebody. I don't think anybody supports that. So why hide that? I think that's something we can all kind of unite around yeah. being bad. But can we? <laughs> like, can we? Because it's the policy of this city not to deport that person, yeah. not to give that person any chance of being deported. That's the official policy of New York and Chicago and SF and LA around these cities. They are continuing to make the, the choice. This is an yes. active, intentional choice they're making. It's, I swear, it's going back to the job numbers. If all of the new jobs went to foreign-born people, that's the reason why they're not, they're just letting people in because it makes the numbers look good. Well, all the female athletes are going to be trans soon, and then no one's going to attack them because they're going to be giant six foot five guys. So, what do we? It's all going to take care of itself. That is true. I think you just solved it. <laughs>
Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.